Hello friends, spectators on the YouTube, I am back with you. It's a pleasure always to interact with you and uh, try to educate you about some of the cancer issues that prevail around us nowadays. I am Dr. Ramesh Parmi, as most of you are aware, an uh, oncosurgeon, surgical oncologist I am called, at Pace Hospital, Madhapur, High Tech City, Hyderabad. Well, uh, there has been a request to tell you guys about the uterine cancer, so there was called endometrial cancer. Uterus is the tissue or the organ in the body in the female in the low tummy called pelvis and uh, this uterus is uh, very essential for a woman to menstruate and also to bear children. So in Telugu it is called Garbha Sanchi and in Hindi they call it as Vachadani. So today I am here to tell you about the uterine cancer which is otherwise called endometrial cancer in medical language. So endometrial cancer or uterine cancer is the same and uh, most of the times uh, in uterus the endometrial cancer is one which develops. So commonest uterine cancer is the endometrial cancer. So endometrium is a lining in the inside the womb that is inside the uterus that is called endometrium. 95% of the times it is the uterine cancer means endometrial cancer arising from the endometrium the innermost layer of the uterus. There is also some other type of cancer which is not very frequent which may be about 5% of the cases that is called uh, uterine sarcoma. So, sarcoma means uh, something which arises from the muscle. So, the uterus has got endometrial lining innermost, then the muscular layer or muscular lining and a thin uh, sheet called the serosa, otherwise called peritoneal covering or serosa. So, this uh, innermost layer is endometrium which is commonest site for uterine cancer. From the muscle of the uterus, as I said, sarcoma might arise at times, which is about 5% of the times. Out of 100 cases of uterine cancer, maybe 5 or sarcomas. So, uterine cancer means uh, it's uh, the endometrial cancer. Why this cancer develops in their percentage of uh, ladies? There are various causes for that, but uh, the exact cause, to be honest with you, is not yet ascertained or understood. But there are contributed factors, or otherwise called risk factors for developing endometrial cancer or the uterine cancer. The main cause or the risk factor is the obesity. Gross overweight is called obese. A very, I mean, a morbid obesity is one of the most common contributory risk factors for endometrial cancer, followed by what is called a hormone called estrogen or deprivation of progesterone and uh, Consumption, I mean, use of uh, estrogen or hyperestrogenic state is another uh, strong reason believed for development of this cancer. For example, uh, some women who are in the menopausal age group might go for some pills called hormone pills to get over the menopausal syndrome, which consists of a series of ailments like you know, hot flushes, lack of proper sleep, and sometimes feeling sick and fatigability some rashes, all these things put together, the woman is very distressed. When she visits her OBG or gynec, probably she might be prescribed what you call the estrogen pills. So, the hormone treatment of menopausal syndrome exclusively by estrogen and not combined pill including progesterone is one contributory factor. The other risk factor observed is the radiation. If a woman is uh, radiated and radiotherapy given, high energy rays, you know, irradiation is called radiotherapy given to the lower abdomen, especially pelvis, in a younger age or some ailment or other. The chances of developing endometrial cancer or called second cancer at a later period of her life is also seen. So, <coughs> pelvic irradiation, as we call in medical language, is one of the risk factors. There is also a genetic factor called, I mean, uh, a germline uh, a mutation and then uh, some genetic background is called Lynch syndrome. L Y N C H is called Lynch syndrome. This is uh, seen in certain percentage of women who develop 
large intestine that is colonic cancer as well as uterine cancer. In this syndrome or in this particular category of people what happens, Lynch syndrome what happens is they develop what is called uh, non-polyposis coli that is uh, colonic cancer. <coughs> So, this non-polyposis colonic cancer is uh, part of uh, in a predisposed individual who might also develop endometrial cancer. So, Lynch syndrome is another contributory risk factor for this. So, early menstruation and late menarche, then followed by, you know, lack of uh, children. I mean, one who didn't get pregnant at all, woman who hadn't born children at all or didn't become pregnant rather, let me put it this way, sometimes there may be abortions and miscarriages. So, a woman who never has become pregnant, a woman who has developed early menarche and late menopause is uh, also at risk. This group of individuals, ladies, are also at risk to develop uterine cancer. The endometrial cancer or uterine cancer which is confined to uterus is roughly, just to make you understand, not gone out of uterus is stage 1, you can say. And in the stage 1 also there are A, B, C. A means only endometrium involved. B means popular part of the muscle has been invaded. And C means some, uh, it is up, appearing up to the serosa. That is uh, stage 1. Stage 2 being the involvement of the cervix, cervix uterus, the last part of the uterus. which is a little away from the, different from the uterine proper body is called cervix involvement. That also again you got A, B, C in that. This is all uh, the details taken by the oncologist and pathologist before they stage the disease. Third stage is what is called uh, the stage of the uterus where the vagina is involved and where the fallopian tubes may be involved and uh, there may be lymph nodes like you know the lymph nodes which are present around each and every organ in the body. They may filter these uh, cancer cells and they may enlarge in size. So, the cancer spreading to regional lymph nodes through lymphatics is called uh, uh, lymphadenopathy and uh, the lymph nodes are present is definitely stage 3 which can be made out by various imaging techniques. Stage 4 is where involvement of the adjacent organs including the bladder, urinary bladder and the rectum and distance spread into the abdomen and probably lungs. So, this is called metastasis or stage 4. Now, what is the prevalence of this? How many people or how many women are affected by this cancer? It may be interesting to know, isn't it? Uh, the risk for a woman to develop a cancer is about 1 in 20. So, after uh, 20 individuals or ladies in the postmenopausal group, about uh, 1 in 20 is the prevalence. 3% of the population is affected by this uterine cancer. So, in the woman population, 3% are the uh, percentage or uh, individuals affected by this cancer. So, the chance of prevalence of this disease is 3 times. The chance of developing uterine cancer for a woman is about 3 in 100. That is one. Secondly, about 20% of the particular age group is about, say, about post-postmenopausal and postmenopausal age group is about 20%. So, some of these risk factors are enumerated. Just to recapitulate obesity, gross overweight, estrogen high content uh, hormonal pill, or estrogen therapy given for some ailments, in, you know, hormonal therapy, including postmenopausal syndromes. Then, pelvic irradiation, radiotherapy to the pelvis in the anger age group for any other uh, cancer or indication. Early menarche and late menopause, these are the contributory factors apart from Lynch syndrome which I told you. So, colonic large bowel cancer and endometrial cancer can be seen in the same individual. So, the symptoms and signs mean symptoms means what the patient complains, signs means what the doctor makes out. The commonest symptom is uh, bleeding per vagina. In the menopausal group, it may be called uh, postmenopausal bleeding PV or in the menstruating group of individuals between 40 to 50 years age, if the lady is still menstruating, excess bleeding or intermenstrual bleed, that means before the 
period sets in again she has some spotting or bleeding pv so between the periods i mean at the time line she might have bleeding per pv that is bleeding of the vagina from the vagina so bleeding is the main cognizant symptom of presentation of this cancer so any spotting or irregular bleeding in a postmenopausal woman who has cessation of periods quite a while ago is an important uh, symptom and should never be neglected the lady should consult immediately the doctor for further evaluation and ascertain the cause of this uh, postmenopausal bleeding which could be sporadic spotting or significant to rule out uterine cancer and uh, those who are in the inst- still menstruating age you develop in, in the, i mean uh, intermenstrual periods i mean bleeding irregular bleeding or excess flow also should be cautious to consult and get evaluated for uterine cancer sometimes they present with you know low abdominal pain that is called pelvic pain some kind of cramps and all that that is bit a little early uh, late stages when the uterine cancer has spread to nearby organ or into the uh, out of the uterus it has gone out and then uh, involving the surrounding tissues so the commonest is the uh, bleeding per pv second is uh, pelvic pain then some kind of you know anemia that is lack of blood because of the loss of blood there will be low hemoglobin level these are the common the causes of uh, uh, i mean some of the symptoms of this uterine cancer once a woman complains of the irregular uh, postmenopausal bleeding or irregular bleeding pv the doctor examines the for any anemia and other things and also they do what is called pelvic examination internal examination of the uh, female uh, genitalia that is internal sexual organs including the cervix and the uterus by doing this pelvic examination the doctor can make out the state of affects that is the size of the uterus the i mean uh, according to the age whether it is compatible or size of the uterus is big and all that they also do the next examination called uh, the hysteroscopy wherein they pass a small flexible tube into the to the cervix into the uterus and then see the endometrium and all that if there is anything amiss later on probably somebody could also take a biopsy from the endometrium to prove or disprove it and lastly the other important test they do is a little invasive called d and c dilatation and curettage curettage means taking out bits of innermost lining that is endometrium where from the cancer arises from different parts of the uterus so that is the final test and all the scrapings and the bits of tissue removed through hysteroscope or through dnc or sent for examination pathological examination called histopathology which would clinch the diagnosis apart from this uh, clinical evaluation that is examination in general and pelvic examination and interventional techniques by the attending gynecologist or doctor there are some other non invasive techniques that is called scans one is the ultrasound scan which is very uh, simple and also quick and uh, 100% non invasive it will give the thickness of the endometrium whether it commensurate with the age or not you can make out any other pathology in the uterus including suspicious malignancy that is uterine cancer then there is what is called cat scan and also mri these are the advanced uh, imaging techniques wherein we find the entire configuration of the uterus and the irregularities and any other lesions or nodules or uh, foci of cancer within the uterus that is uterine wall can be made out so with all these investigations one uh, suspects then uh, diagnosis and confirms it and also after biopsy the staging is done depending on the stage of the disease the treatment is given so the treatment consists essentially of uh, surgery most of the uterine cancers which are diagnosed likely a little early compared to other cancers let me put it this way amenable for treatment and curative treatment is well assured so the main step of uh, treatment is surgery that is removal of the uterus in stage 1 probably uh, uterus uh, along with the uterus 
uh, one side, uh, both sides, uh, there is 12 up in tubes and one ovary along with the cuff of vagina and cervix are removed. But in uh, advanced stage, it is called uh, total hysterectomy rather radical hysterectomy with bilateral salping ophorectomy and uh, removal of a cuff of vagina. This is what is called the radical hysterectomy. Along with the surgery, please remember that lymph nodes have to be dissected. Now that the name of the operation for return cancer is called surgical staging. So it is very prudent and important on the part of the operating surgeon not only to knock off the uterus and other tissues but also the lymph glands have to be done, pelvic lymphadenectomy. So this is in short the surgical treatment which is the definite line of treatment for uterine cancer. Apart from the surgical treatment, uh, there are also other modalities. Now the surgery can be either a kind of manual invasive surgery or a, an open surgery depending on the expertise and the indication of the patient. Expertise of the surgeon and indication patient's uh, stage of the disease and all, amenability and all that. So surgery being done, if necessary, radiotherapy is also given in these cases or those cases where surgery is not feasible for any medical reason, scientific reason, or patient uh, refuses surgery, I mean surgery, unfortunately for any particular reason, radiotherapy is a choice, but it's only second line of treatment. The first choice is surgery. So chemotherapy is also there where cytotoxic drugs are given mixed with saline and glucose by medical oncologists and immunotherapy is also coming in a way. Then there is what is called targeted therapy. These are various other modalities of treatment. Early diagnosis and uh, availability of a good surgical expertise and a fairly simple surgery is the key for uh, high cure rates in this cancer, particular cancer. The cure rates can be, that is 5 years survival, 10 years survival can be as high as 85% to 85, 81% to 95%. So when early diagnosis is made and good surgery is performed, complete surgery, then the life expectancy can be as normal as any other individual or lady without cancer. She will be cured of it. So 95% cure rates are also seen. There is 5 year and 10 year survivals in these cancers in various centers. The age in which this uh, uterine cancer, that is endometrial cancer develops is roughly about 51 average or 55 years. That means it develops after the menstruation seizures in the woman. It's called uh, the menopausal disease. Generally, in the menopausal age group, we commonly see this. It's not uh, very common in uh, younger age groups who are menstruating. So, the commonest age group in which uterine cancer is found is about average 51 years. In some centers and countries, rather, it's about 55 years. So. As I said, this is a generally menopausal cancer. Now, menopause means, as I told you, it's a cessation of periods. The woman is not menstruating anymore. She has stopped menstruating. That's called menopause. If you have any suspicion about this cancer, uterine cancer, or any preventive measures you think are needed, Actually, there is no any preventive measures as such, but only to have a good lifestyle. Screening is also not available for this cancer. So the best way is to try to prevent it by keeping proper body weight, good lifestyle, avoiding diabetes, avoiding overweight, that is obesity, and uh, <coughs> avoiding high estrogen content pills for whatever reason one is if prescribed.